to our lesson on exploring praise and worship. And before I move to the next thing, just want to kind of recap a couple of the things that we said last week. And I pray that you've taken notes. But uh, one of the things we said last week is that God is calling for corporate participation and not just a remnant. OK, God is calling for a corporate participation and not just the remnant. Uh, also, we said that the reason some people are withdrawn when it comes to worship or some people are withdrawn when it comes to worship, but they're very vocal in praise. And the reality is uh, praise is defined uh, as to command, to applaud, to express approval or admire, to extol in words or in song, to magnify, to glorify. And so that praise, we talked about how it is vocal and is also visible, okay? Uh, we also said that last week that we praise God directly by extolling or admiring him and we praise God indirectly uh, by commending or magnifying him to others. That's when you talk to other people about how good God is and how good God has been. Uh, I'm just trying to hit some of the things that we talked about last week. Um, and if you were not here, then you're more than welcome to go back and look at that video from last week so you can gather and pull your notes. Um, one of the big things that I hit on was meditation is not praise. Okay, Me meditation is not praise. Again, praise is audible, is vocal, is visible, is demonstrated, okay? So, uh, so tonight, again, want to let you know that praise is both vocal and non-vocal. There are both vocal and non-vocal uh, forms of praise. Praise is demonstrated. Here's what I want to give you. Praise is to be done according to our will and not out of our emotions. Praise is to be done according to our will and not out of our emotions. Because when you do something as an emotional response, that means you're going to only give praise only if you feel like it. That means your praise is going to be dictated by your mood. But when it's something that you will to do, it is something that you're doing regardless of how you feel. Regardless of what you think. So again, praise is to be done according to our will and not our emotion. Okay, y'all got that? Okay, somebody go to Psalms 42 and 5. I want to point this out real quick. Psalms 42 and 5. I want to highlight something real quick. And this is all under the heading of how praise is expressed. Okay. This is all under how praise is expressed. Psalms 42 and 5. Y'all there? Okay. It says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet what? I shall what? Praise him for the help of his what? So in other words, he's talking about in this particular verse, praising God for who he is. Okay. Now go to uh, verse 11. Y'all there? It says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? For I shall what? Uh-huh. For I shall yet. Uh-huh. Yeah, you shall praise him again. Oh, you, you, you read out of which translation? You read out of New Living. Okay, I'm reading out of the King James. It says, so I shall yet praise him 
who is the health of my continence and my God. So now in verse 11, he's praising God for what he is doing. Y'all get that? So verse five is who he is. Verse 11 is what he's doing. And so you have to understand again that praise is demonstrated and is vocal, but we praise God for who he is and for what he does. It ain't got nothing to do with the gifts you get. Am I making sense? Are, are y'all getting that? Okay, so now we're going to move into the next, the next area, and the next area in, in us as we're exploring praise and worship, we're going to talk about being a praiser, okay? Being a praiser. Uh, Psalms 114 and 2 talks about how Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel became his dominion, right? And so that means that all of Israel belong to God, but God in that he resides amongst the praisers. So what does that mean? That if you don't have any praise and if you're not a true praiser, you can expect not to have God's presence. Let me give it to you again. God ain't going to hang out with folk who don't praise. So I don't care how deep you are. If you don't have any praise, God ain't going to show up. Scripture says he inhabits what? He inhabits what? So if he inhabits the praises of his people, to inhabit means what? To dwell, to come in, to sit down, to take up residence. Listen to what he says. Again, Judah became God's sanctuary. The sanctuary is a safe place. It's a habitation. It's a dwelling. And so if there is no praise, then God's not coming into the sanctuary. Hello. Y'all get that? Okay, let, let's keep going. Let's keep going. It says, or understand, in Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. God will visit the church. Now watch this. But it is the praisers that will know him. It's the praisers that will know him. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked me. Because we'll be in a worship experience. Y'all ever sat in a worship experience and you trying to figure out why some people, I mean, you know, you feel God. I mean, you, I mean, you, you done, you done sweated out your good outfit. Your wig all crooked, your weave itching now. You done got a run in your stockings. You done messed up your good suit. And there was people that was sitting there trying to figure out what's wrong with you. Because they don't never praise. And so since they don't never praise, they don't know him like that. Because they don't praise, they don't have that relationship, so they can't sense him when he comes in the room. Case in point, the way the worship was on Sunday, I seen some folks sitting there with their face all turned up. And the reason they was in that place is because they don't know him like that. And so because they don't know him like that, they were not able to enter into the place where he was in their habitation. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? All right. So watch this. The only way praisers really know him, this happens when a person has a life and a lifestyle of praise. People struggle to give God praise. They do, or people that struggle to give God praise, they do so because praise is not a part of their natural life. So when it's not something you do, you feel forced, it becomes difficult. Case in point, I be out here sometime, and it be folk here, and every now and then, I just hear somebody singing. 
they, 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 they just, uh, they mind in their business, but they just a singing. And they do it so effortlessly because it's a part of who they are. And you can tell that is their lifestyle because their continents ain't like everybody else's continents. Praisers walk different. Praisers act different. You show me a real praiser and I'll show you a person who's able to deal with depression who don't give in to it. Because you can't be a praiser and always concerned and frustrated about the cares of this life. Because if you're going to praise, that means you have to trust God and you have to purposely divorce yourself from what's going on around you to concentrate solely on him. You understand what I'm saying? And so that's why I said praise is something that's audible and it's something that's demonstrated, but it ain't always something that's done in the sanctuary. So if you don't praise in here, it's a good chance you don't praise nowhere else. Well, I get my praise on at home. You can't. Because when it's in you, it's going to come out of you. Period. Period. Don't matter where you at. I find myself on my job at times and I just break out singing to him. Oh, look, what's wrong with you? Nothing. I just, I, I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel good. I want to give God glory. So I'll sing songs, how great thou art. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. You know, and when I stand up here and sing them on Sunday and folk be looking at me, I get a little nervous. I said, I, that's what I'm saying. You know, I'm like, hi. I said, I went back to my granddaddy. I said, listen here, Doc. I said, granddad, I'm in the Baptist church and I sung a hymn and they looked at me. I said, I got scared. But here's the reality. Here's the reality. When it's in you, it comes out. And ain't nobody got to force you. Ain't nobody got to push you. Praise team ain't got to sing 10, 12 songs to get you there. You come in already there. Y'all get what I'm saying? But when that's your lifestyle, it's natural. Like brushing your teeth in the morning. I pray that's a part of your lifestyle. Praise the Lord. Some people I meet, I be questioning, but, you know, it's all right. But when it's a part of you, it's something that's natural for you. That's what I'm saying. So, again, it becomes difficult for people who are not praisers. It becomes difficult to give adoration to one that they do not know nor have relationship with. You cannot praise God if you do not have real relationship. Because relationship denotes that there is a level of intimacy to where that person knows you and you know that person. We have to get beyond this surface, uh, this surface relationship we have with this knowledge of who Christ is. Because everybody is not going to know him in the same way. So if you're trying to know God based on how he deals with Sister Darlene, you're in trouble. Because you don't know Sister Darlene's journey. You don't know her struggle. You don't know what she's been through. So the way she prays God is based on what God has done for her as an individual. And that's what I want you to get. That praise, first of all, starts as an individual. And when we come together corporately, God is expecting everybody to reflect on what he's done for them as an individual to lift up a thunderous shout as a corporate body to shift and shape the atmosphere atmosphere and to shake the heavens and I got issue when we know God has been good to you even if you didn't get the money this week even if you didn't get a brand new car even if you didn't buy no brand new house the fact that you walked up in the sanctuary was reason enough for you to give God praise we're always looking for the big things and I want to tell you that most of the time God is in the little stuff Boys to Men had a song some time ago. Don't, don't y'all judge me either. But they had a song in their, on their first album that said, little things mean a lot. 
that you have to learn to compete to appreciate what you got. And when we really apply that to our relationship with God, our praise will be much more authentic. Wouldn't nobody have to force you and push you because you realize if he don't do nothing else, God doesn't owe me another thing, but I owe him everything. So my praise ought not be restricted and my praise ought not be quieted. You ought to be loud in here on a Sunday morning. All that, oh, I'm just, I'm just thinking on his goodness. And you ain't said nothing, you ain't moved. If we push you, you might kill over. You, you got to, the old folk used to call it the can't help it. What you mean you can't help it? I can't help but lift my hands. I can't help but open my mouth. I can't help but take a run. I can't help but scream out. I can't help but cry. I can't help but lay on my face. I can't help but give God my all. Why? Because he's been just that good and I don't have enough time to tell you exactly all that he's done for me. I just need you to watch my life and my life is proof positive that God is good, that his blessing is still flowing, that there is still oil moving. Why? Why you praise like that because God's been just that good and if you come back next week I'm going to pick it up again that's how praise ought to be your praise and worship to God ought to be contagious but the problem is we got too many church folk who are entitled can't give God praise because you ain't sitting in your favorite seat okay let me get off of that let me get off of that so, again, watch this. Praise is not something that's just reserved for a Sunday morning gathering. I ought to call you and you ought to be like, whoo, I was in the spirit. What you want? I got to get back in. OK, y'all think I'm playing, but. You know, OK, understand when there is a real relationship with God and one really knows God for themselves. It is not a show, but it's real. And it's evidence because the real and mature Christians, the real and mature believers, those are the ones who are the praisers. Those are the ones who are the worshipers. And those are the ones, get this, who are most willing to accept the new things God is doing. If you have a hard time shifting, I guarantee you, you're not a praiser. You're not no worshiper. And people want to always use the scripture. Who well, was, well, you know, scripture say God changes not. I understand God does not change. What they meant was God's characteristics don't change. His love don't change. His ability to forgive and willingness to forgive when one repents don't change. But his methods does. And so how God was moving in 1935 and how he's moving in 2019. So how is it that God adjusts with the time, but you don't? Okay, let me leave that alone. Y'all looking at me funny. Again, praisers and worshipers, when they're mature, they understand the flow of the spirit because they are the ones that's connected most through relationship. When you have a relationship with God, then God is able to open up and reveal some stuff to you. And you know when it is the mind and the move of the spirit because you shift with that thing easy. We have to stop trying to force spiritual things on carnal people. Some folk ain't going to get it. I don't care what you do. And I want you to understand. I know it sounds a little harsh to say it like this, but I want you to understand it ain't they, it ain't your job to make sure they get it. That ain't your job. You got to get it. Yeah. yeah who, who done flew on the airplane before? OK, so if you've flown on the airplane, you know when they're going over the safety rules and the safety regulations, right? And they tell you that if 
for whatever reason, we start to lose cabin pressure, these masks gonna fall. Now, the main, 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 the main rule they give you is before you attempt to help anybody else, put yours on first. Secure your mask first. Here's what I want you to get. Before you attempt to push anybody else into a place of praise, take care of yours first. Make sure you're in that place. Make sure that you are that, that you are authentic in that place. Place. Make sure that your praise is real. Make sure that your worship is real. Make sure that your praise is sure. Make sure that your praise is vocal. Make sure that your praise is demonstrated. Why? Because most of people learn from what they see. They don't really care about what you're saying. They want to see what you do. And if that's your lifestyle day in and day out, every time they call you, you still got a praise on your lips. You ain't fussing. You ain't complaining. You ain't cussing nobody out. But you still got a praise you still got good things to say about how good God is and you just came out of surgery but you still saying how good God is and you just got out that car accident you talking about how good God is and you just lost your job that's what's gonna push them to becoming a true praiser just like you because they'll understand that praise ain't what I do is who I am it's my lifestyle I don't praise because I ain't got nothing better to do. I praise because that's what I was born to do. So if you don't get nothing else out of me, you're going to get some praise. At some point, I'm bringing God into the conversation. At some point, I'm telling you how good he is. At some point, I'm telling you how he's made a way. That's what praisers do. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so now here's the question that most people ask, then Reverend, why should we praise the Lord? I'm glad you asked that question. We praise him because we are commanded in his word to do so. Understand that kings don't ask, they command. <laughs> kings don't ask you to do nothing, they tell you what... But now we say he's the king of glory, but we treat him like he's a servant from glory. We don't treat God like the king, because if we treated him like the king he really is, then we would give him what he already laid out in his word as a command for us to do. You ever watch those movies where people try to negotiate with the king? And most times when they try to negotiate with the king, they really ain't got nothing to negotiate with because the stuff they even trying to negotiate with really belongs to the king. So if he really took the little bit you had, ain't nothing you can really say about it because you really ain't earned it and you really ain't did nothing and the resources you would use to get what you got was from the king in the first place. So really what belongs to you? So Psalm says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. So if all that belongs to God, then what you own? What you got? So if you ain't got nothing. How you with your not having nothing self. Don't try to negotiate with the person that then gave you everything. On when you gonna praise and you talking about some well today, I don't feel like going to church, so I ain't going. I hope this service don't take all day. I'm tired. That's rain. Don't get scared. It's rain. It's okay. So it's Teresa got a little nervous. It's just rain. You understand what I'm saying? So we cannot bargain with God when we really don't have anything to bargain with. So then why do we praise? Psalms 150 and 1 says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. 
Praise him in the firmament of his power. Understand that this is not a suggestion. And if you will praise God anywhere, it ought to be in the sanctuary. The sanctuary is one place we should always see praise going forth. It is not an option of if we're going to praise God when we come in here for any type of worship setting. Any type of gathering, praise should always be going forth in this place. So if we don't praise when we come in this place, then we are going against the very command of God. So for all them people who tell you that it don't take all that, because that's the, that's the stuff that some folks say, you need to read them Psalms 150, because Psalms 150 tells me that I ought to be praising God in his sanctuary. So actually, praise is in order, and anybody that don't praise in the sanctuary, you're really out of order. You going against scripture with your saved, deep, sanctified self. Well, I'm just going to think on his goodness. You thinking ain't saying nothing. No, we need you to open your mouth. Because your praise has to be heard. Again, we talked about last week that if it is not heard, it is not praise. If it's not vocalized. If it is not demonstrated, if it is not seen, it is not praise. You cannot praise with keeping your mouth shut, your arms folded, and humming and thinking to yourself. That ain't praise. Hello, somebody. All right. So, then why does God demand our praise? Because we know we're commanded to do it. Psalms 150 and 1 tells us why, uh, why we should be praising because we're commended. But why does God demand our praise? It is not until we praise him are we able to come into proper relationship with him. Get this. God is enthroned in our praise. We talked about it earlier that God inhabits the praises of his people. That's Psalms 22 and 3. But thou art holy, O oh, that thou inhabits the praises of Israel. If he's going to inhabit it, you've got to give it. You got to give it. And I want you to know that it don't take nothing from you to praise God, but it adds a whole lot to you. Okay, okay. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. But ha have, you ever, have you ever been in a, t in a place or in a position where you gave God praise in one of the moments in your life where you were the most frustrated you were you you were just almost at your wits end. You was about to give up. You was about ready to walk out. And you decided that one moment you gonna lift your hand. You didn't care who was looking. It, it was it was it was that moment you uttered under your breath, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I I bless your name. And you start singing one of them good old songs, talking about down through the years, God's been good to me. And you start saying, Well, just walk with me, Lord, while I'm on this tedious journey. I just want Jesus to walk with me and hold my hand and be my guide and you done got through all of that stuff and next thing you know before it was all over all said and done that whole situation began to turn around and the reason it turned around is not because you were so good but it was because you created an atmosphere for God to come in and sit down in your midst you created something for God to inhabit and when he started inhabiting your praise he came down in the middle of it and his very presence changed the outcome of your situation all I'm saying is praise adds more to you and when you praise God you set yourself up for something greater you set yourself up for something more there is power in praise 
We praise God simply because he's worthy. Psalms 48 and 1 says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountains of his holiness. Whew, sounds like worthiness to me. Revelations 4 and 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure uh, they are and were created. Look at that. It was for his pleasure. Not yours. But get this, it was for his pleasure, but you reap the benefits. Y'all got to help me understand that type of relationship. How is it that it's for me, but every time you do it for me, you benefit from it. You praising God, and every time you give God praise, he adds more days to you. You praising God, and every time you give God praise, you get a little bit stronger. You can see a little bit further. You can go a little bit further. You can stand a little while longer. You, you, can, deal, you, you can deal with some stuff, and you're able to walk into some areas that ordinarily you weren't able to walk in before. You're able to go into rooms that was shut, that, that was shut off to you before. You are able to unlock some doors now because you learned how to give God praise because he is worthy, not because you were treating him like a genie in a lamp, not because you felt like he owed you something, but because of the simple fact you understand that the reason I am here is to give him praise that's why I was created in the first place revelations 4 and 11 again thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou has created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So how are you going to not give God praise and that's what you was created to do? How are you not going to worship and that's what you were created to do? When I get in my car, because my car was created, to take me from point A to point B when I stick the key in the ignition and I turn it and I put my foot on the gas. My car does not have the right, nor does it have an option to tell me I ain't going in that direction. It does not have the option to tell me I don't feel like it today, so we can't go. I control the car. So the car moves at my command. The car moves when I will it to move. The car go where I tell it to go. The car does not tell me he ain't going. The car don't tell me no. The car don't tell me I can't. The car just gets in and does what I tell it to do and it goes in the direction I'm leading it without any question, without any hesitation. Why? Because that's what my car was created to do. It was created to follow the instruction of the owner. So then, if my car was created, whoo, and it's hot in here. If my car was created to move and follow the instruction of the owner, let me read it to you one more time just in case you're not getting what I'm saying. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So, if that's the case, then where's your praise? How, how is it then that because we were created for his pleasure, 
We do everything but what he created us for. We give God more displeasure than we give God pleasure. Because I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, you can't praise and gossip. You can't praise and be a liar. You can't praise and be a tattler. A backbiter. You can't praise if you don't tithe. How you going to be a praiser and you don't even give? Ooh, it done got quiet now. Because I want you to know giving is another form of worship. How you praising God for the increase and you keep stealing his money? Matter of fact, the scripture says when you miss your tithe, you're supposed to add a fifth part. That's called interest. Yeah. He says you got to add a fifth part there unto. That means interest. You owe me more because you robbed me the first time. A lot of us driving in stolen cars, living in stolen houses, wearing stolen clothes. Because we use God's money. Half the vacations you done went on wasn't even your vacation. You took God's money and went. Now understand, watch this, because I don't want y'all to think that God don't want you to have stuff. <laughs> he wants you to have, but he wants you to be responsible. He said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. He said that there may be meat in mine. He said, then prove me. In other words, test me, try me out, take me at my word. He said, and see if I, not you, you can't multiply your money. He said, so see if I won't open the windows of heaven and I'll pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. You know, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. What did he say? Shall men give unto your bosom. But if God can't trust you as a worshiper, your pockets going to keep holes in them. Because if you don't worship and if you're not a real worshiper, if you're not a real praiser, that means you don't give God honor and glory for what he's doing. That means you take what God is doing as if you are entitled, as if you are owed it. Now, I know they used to say, I got two more things I'm going to give you, two more scriptures. I know they used to say that, you know, I'm storing up my praise. If you ain't never heard that, just keep living. I, I, I used to hear them say, I'm storing up my praise for that time I can't praise. No such thing. No such thing. No such thing. Praise is not something that you put in the bottle and sit it on the shelf. Praise is not something that you treat as a non-perishable item. Praise is what you do on a consistent basis just as much as you take breath in and give breath out. With every fiber of your being, praise ought to always come from you. Because if you can put praise on the shelf and store it up for later, then you ought to be able to put air on the shelf. Put your breath on the shelf and store it up for later. But you can't do that because even the breath you breathe ain't even yours. 
You're breathing God's air. So how are you going to take God's stuff and say, I'm going to put it up and I'm going to use it for later? No, praise is something that God wants you to give now in the congregation of the saints on your job and at the bank. You ought to be giving God praise. And if you are not giving God praise uh, and you're not extolling him, you ought to be telling somebody about God's goodness. Because even if you not going up, you ought to be telling somebody, listen here, let me tell you the last thing God has done. Let me tell you about how good God has been to me. Let me tell you what God brought me out of. Remember, this is what we were created for. First Peter two and nine. First Peter two and nine says, but ye are a chosen generation. Royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people. If you got your own Bible, underline this, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Tell your neighbor, that's what you was created for. Yeah, it's, it's guaranteed. And that, that's why I said before that although praise is for God, we the ones that benefit the most. Because I ain't never seen nobody giving God praise and you still mad about what somebody didn't do. You still frustrated and depressed. No, you can't be depressed and praised at the same time. You have to make up in your mind on which one you going to focus on. And that's what you will to do. That's why praise has to be based on our will, as I said, and not our emotion. You don't praise God based on how you feel, because if it's based on how you feel, you will always negate and ignore his goodness. And you're going to go off of your current circumstance and circumstance comes from situations and situations based on happenstance and happenstance is based on what's happening right now. So if if the place I'm in right now doesn't look conducive for me to give God praise and if I really don't feel like it because my boss done got on on my nerve then I ain't gonna do it and God is saying I ain't the one that upset you but I'm the one that gave you life I'm the one that woke you up this morning how is it that you're going to treat me bad because of how somebody else did you why are you making God pay for something he ain't even do that's like people that go into relationships and that relationship end because they treat the new one like the old one this new man, this new woman ain't even did nothing. Well, they reminded me of what I come from. That's because you ain't let that thing go. But here it is. We talk about this. Okay, let, let, I ain't going to do that. 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 But, you know, that's why I get upset with all these folk and this church hurt stuff, Sister Ella. I ain't going to church because I got church. Church ain't did nothing to you. It's a couple of individuals who go to church that has upset you. But if you was going and focusing on the right thing, you wouldn't have time to be concerned about what they do. Okay, okay, let me get his last scripture. Let me get his last scripture. Isaiah 43, 20 and 21 says, the beast of the field shall honor me the dragons and the owls, because I give water in the wilderness. Whoo, that's bad. Water in the wilderness. He's going to give you resources in dry places. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone too. And rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for who? Who he formed them for? He formed them for himself. You weren't created for you. You weren't created for your boo. You weren't created for your children. Those are all benefits of God creating you and his hand being on you. He said, but I formed you for myself. 
Then he says, they shall show forth my praise. So again, if this is what you were created for, how is it everything you do don't line up with why you here? How is it that we were created for praise and praise is the most difficult thing for us to do? We got more complaints and, you know, ooh, they was off today. They, ooh, I didn't like that pitch, boy. That, they don't need to sing that song no more. Listen, if you come in with the mindset of doing what you were created to do in the first place, you don't care how off key they are because you off key too, but you realize my off key, I ain't trying to get the mic. I'm just trying to get in his presence. Because when you praise, you make it your mission, you make it your goal to concentrate on God. Nobody else matters. The week I had don't even matter. Because my responsibility is to show forth his praise. Now, to show means it has to be visible. So if you ain't doing nothing, that ain't praise. He said, I created you for myself so that you will show forth my praise. So if I'm going to show it, who am I showing it to? I'm showing it to everybody. And because we're all supposed to be showing forth his praise, most time I'm going to miss yours because I'm too busy doing mine. There was, there was a story, and I'm closing with this, and we're going to pick it up next week. But there was a story uh, told by Dr. Jamal Bryant about a young lady who had came to the pastor's office, told the pastor, Deacon Pete, she was leaving the church. Pastor asked her, well, why are you leaving church? She said, the people always gossiping and they be talking about me and, you know, they don't nobody like to give God praise. They always got something to say. I mean, I, I just can't do it no more, Pastor. I got to go. He said, OK, I tell you what, do me a favor. Get you a cup of water. And I want you to walk around the entire sanctuary. And if you can do it. And not spill a drop. You can't go. He said, if you do it and don't spill a drop, don't go. You don't need to leave. He said, but if you're doing it and there's water all over the place, no problem. I give you a letter to go wherever you want to go. She said, OK, this is it's easy. I got this because who? Who can't do that? So she gets it. She's walking around the church. And he asked her when it was all over and done, he said, how much water did you spill? I haven't spilled none. And it wasn't that she didn't want to leave. She just wanted to show she could handle the test. So he says, do you know why you didn't spill any water? She said, yeah, because I was concentrating on not spilling any water. And so I did what I purposed and I was concentrating on doing. He says, so then why is it when you come to worship, you spilling water? Because when you come to worship, if you want to go because you're hearing all the gossiping, you're seeing all the people looking at you, you ain't concentrating on what you came in here to do. He said, now, as you walk, did you hear anybody talking about you? Nope. Did you feel anybody looking at you funny? Nope. Why? Because I was concentrating on what I was doing. 
And that's how it is when we come in here and we ought to be giving God praise. When you start concentrating on what it is you doing, you ain't got time to be worried about what nobody else ain't doing. No time to be worried about what they saying, what they ain't saying. It don't even matter. My only concern is when I come in, do I feel his presence? Can I sense him in the room? Does he show up? Is he speaking to me? When the preacher gets up to preach, am I getting a word from the Lord? When the worship team go forth, if the glory don't fall with them is going to fall right here with me on the seat that I sit on because I'm not concerned about nobody else. Why? Because I was per I was created to praise and my whole purpose of coming here on Sunday is to show forth his praise. I ain't trying to upset you. I ain't trying to irritate you. I just want you to know that God has been that good to me and if I can't express it in words, I'm going to show it in my dance. I'm going to show it in my action because everything about me ought to scream praise. Everything about me ought to say glory. Everything about me ought to say hallelujah. Everything about me ought to show forth God's goodness and his mercy and his grace and his everlasting favor. Why do you praise God? Because that's what I was created to do. And I'm not going to do anything I ain't created to do. That's why I don't get into all this gossip. That's why I ain't frustrated. That's why I ain't crying. I ain't better than nobody. I'm just a praiser. Yeah. And so when you make up in your mind, this is why God called me. Yeah. This is what I've been created for. Then you don't concern yourself with that other stuff. Yeah. 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 Folks start asking you, did you hear what they said? Did it have anything to do with praise? No, what I don't want to hear. It. Does it have anything to do with worshiping God? Does it have anything to do with giving God glory? No, then I don't want to hear it. You cannot, Whew, Jesus, give it to you like this and I'm done. You cannot, or we cannot, say it like that. We cannot claim to be a lighthouse and every time you come in the lighthouse, it's full of darkness. Praise calls for illumination. Praise calls for revelation. Praise calls for breakthrough. And the only way we start to experience God in his fullness is when we make the atmosphere conducive for him to inhabit what we're doing. So if there is no praise, there is no presence. Jesus, if there is no praise, there is no presence. So if you want him to show up, you have to show forth his praise. Show forth means put on display for all to see. And I'm going to be honest with you. You can't fake praise. You can't fake it. We can tell when you're playing. And when it and that thing really get a hold of you. You know, I'm a church kid. I've been in church my whole little life. Monday through Friday, BTU. I, I done did it all. Night service, six o'clock prayer in the morning, 12 noon, all that stuff. And we used to go home. After church, after complaining about being in church and play church, we get home and we re preach the sermons. Choir gonna start singing, we gonna shout a little bit. And one day, while we playing, God showed up. And it got to the point that he showed up that those of us that were still playing got scared. 
But we trying to figure out Dick and Pete. What wrong with him? That joker got to shaking and crying and couldn't stop. We went and got my grandmother. At this point, this wasn't funny no more. And she said, because it doesn't got real to him. It's only so long you can keep calling his name and he don't show up. Because truth is, while we were playing, there was a part of us that really wanted to see if he was real. And because if you keep calling him, even in that place while you're trying to figure out if he real, but you got enough faith that if he show up, I'm just going to let him do what he do. And he came on in the room. And that taught me right there that it does not matter where you are when your heart and your mind is fixed on him, he'll always show up. But you got to understand that this is what you were created to do. So therefore, praise is something that is ordinary, it is ordained, and it ought to happen every time we come in here. So you start telling folk, hey, if you don't give God praise, you know what? You was out of order in worship today. What you talking about? You didn't give God no praise. You didn't give God no glory. You was out of order today. Don't come back up in here like that. Next time you come in here next week, you better come in here and give God praise you because you messing up my stuff. You messing up my victory. You messing up my breakthrough when you sit down and hold your praise. Because there are some blessings that come from the corporate worship. There are some healings that come from the corporate worship and the corporate praise. So if you holding on to it, you stopping me from getting everything I'm supposed to get out of God this week. And so now if you done made up in your mind before you got here, you ain't going to give him what he's due. Then I need you to stay at home. Don't come in here and throw everybody else off because you got the wrong spirit. Whew, okay, let me get off of that. Let me get off of that. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Come in. Okay. So it's a time and place for everything. It's a season for everything we do. Mm -hmm. So Sunday morning has time to meditate. No. Time to participate. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Because I, I, we talked about that last week. How you, how you meditating and the preacher preaching? You, you ain't heard the word. You, because praise is active and we have to be active participants. We have to be engaged in the worship because the word that go forth might not be where your deliverance is. Your deliverance could have been, could have been in the prayer that the deacon prayed. But you trying to come to church late. Your prayer or, or your deliverance was in the first song, the praise team song. But because, you know, you got an issue with people on the praise team. Psh. You understand what I'm saying? And so and so when we do that, we tell God, I don't care who you decided to use. They ain't good enough for me. When you ignore, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. When you ignore who God has put before you to bless you and lead you into the worship, when you ignore them people as if they're not good enough, that's what you're telling God. Although you decided to use them, they ain't good enough for me. I need something better. They ain't on my level. Some folk, I ain't even deep enough for, you know, I'm, I'm giving one text, they're reading something else. And then you can tell the people that's not connected because when we all over here, because we all done got the same word, so we got the same mindset to move forward. They sitting over there talking about some where you going? You, 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 you ain't tapped in. But come with the mindset to praise. Come with the mindset to worship and watch what God do for you. Yes, sir.
Yeah, scripture says when Paul and Silas was in jail, they sang and praised. Scripture said the prisoners heard them. The prisoners what? They heard them. So they were vocal and they were loud. So how are you meditating? Can't nobody hear you. Ain't hearing nothing from you. Y- y- y'all get where I'm going. All right. Amen. So we, we got to move to a place of praise. We got to be better uh, at it. We got to be intentional with our praise, with our worship. And we're we going to get we're going to dig some uh, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into some of these things. This is just part one. Yeah, it gets deeper. What you got? Sunday, I was going through a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Well, you know what? Hold, hold that real quick. Let me close this out so I can let you let you do that. Uh, y'all give God praise for our YouTube family. I want to say to you one more time, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for tuning in. We do pray that something was said on tonight that was a blessing to you, that it will help you in your walk and in your journey with Christ. It is our hope and it is our wish that you will come here and worship with us in the sanctuary, 8806 Mac Avenue, where we are the lighthouse on Mac Ave. Again, thank you so much. God bless you. And we look to see you soon. Y'all give God praise. (laughs) 